Hello everyone and welcome back to another edition of the Lazy Kitchen. Today we're going to make healthy tacos. I know some of you are raising an eyebrow wondering how, how those two words can be together but hopefully by the end, we, uh, the end of the recipe today you'll see that that's a possibility. Um, for those of you who are new, welcome to the Lazy Kitchen. This is a place for people who uh, for a variety of, uh, of reasons, don't see themselves as cooks, but they still would like to put a healthy and affordable meal on their table. Uh, we only have three basic rules in the Lazy Kitchen. Everyone's favorite is the Lazy Rule, in that we do uh, less than 10 minute prep time with very little prep and cleanup. Uh, rule number two is thrifty, in the sense that we try to keep things as affordable as possible and still maintain good nutrition. I will tell you exactly where I source my ingredients and for what cost. And uh, rule number three is healthy. It's one that's very important to me as a healthcare provider. Uh, healthy is uh, little to no processed foods or minimally processed foods, um, a complete protein, a complete carbohydrate. It's going to be gluten-free by virtue of the fact that I have celiac and a variety of vegetables. We try to have at least two vegetables in a recipe, and that's often one of the hardest things for people to achieve. Um, the reason that I thought about taco, which is a little bit of a different format than some things we've done in the past where it's all in one dish, whether it's a pot or a baking dish, is um, because sometimes people need a little help bridging the gap to healthy eating by, by transforming something that's familiar and feels like a comfort food into a main staple that definitely has a high nutritional value. So being, uh, I have a lot of uh, moms have told me, well, you know, if you can make something with tacos, my kids will at least give it a try. So this is my, uh, hopefully my best attempt at that. Let's talk about what you'll need to cook this recipe today. It's going to be stove top. You certainly could do that in your electric cooker if you have it. Mine happens to be busy cooking something else, so I'm gonna make mine on the stove top. And you really don't need anything more than a very basic good pan on your stove. Um, you, as far as the, the tortillas, you'll just put them on a little plate and in a second I'll talk about what you wanna look for. So, um, protein, we're gonna talk about two things. Uh, I have a pound of ground beef here. You try to get the best quality meat that you can get. Uh, for sure, try to go organic if you can. Uh, grass fed is great, but try to do the best you can. Meat is the, going to be the pricier part of this recipe. Um, and on an average, good quality ground beef per pound is going to be somewhere like around five or six uh, six dollars. Mine is comes from a bulk animal that we butchered, so I'm not really sure how much that would come out to. These days, a lot of people are trying to stretch out their food budget. I, we're going to do that today by adding beans, legumes to, um, to our protein. Uh, this blends really well with the beef. I'm going to use refried beans. There are uh, very different qualities of, of refried beans. Uh, look in the back of the can for something that's basically beans, water, maybe salt and lime, but nothing. You don't want to have a lot of preserves in this and out of this. Um, you know, a can of black beans, they were like a dollar and eighty cents, and the ingredients are water, sea salt, spice, and jalapeno pepper. So even though it's canned, it's still you know relatively minimally processed. Um, on our starch and uh, and and the beans are a combination of your starch as well as, as some uh, additional protein. For the starch, we're going to use plain corn tortillas. And then again, the uh, uh, tortillas are cheap, no matter where you get them, but really look for a, pros uh, a product that's minimally altered. Um, the ingredients really of a good quality corn tortilla should basically be corn and water and salt. This one is corn, water, lime, and salt. So, um, you know, a bag of those is gonna be maybe like a dollar and 50 cents. So it's a really inexpensive carbohydrate. A little more processed but still adequate uh, from time to time. On the vegetable end of things, the uh, peppers and onions really rule with this recipe for the, the, um, the meat, bean and vegetable mix that we're going to add to the tacos. And so what I have here, um, 
you can get these bags of mixed bell peppers and onions. I have one of them, and then I, in, I wanted to get another one because I'm making a little bit bigger recipe, but I have some chopped onions from a bag that's about 60 cents worth of uh, chopped onions, and I have another small bag of frozen cup bell peppers that was about a dollar and 30 cents, so it's pretty affordable. As far as the, uh, um, the condiments, you'll probably want to have a little bit of moisture, so I'm going to add a little bit of broth. Any broth will work, whatever you happen to have in the fridge. Those things, once you open them, are good for a while. Um, the spices are going to be uh, chili, chili powder and cumin. Both of them readily available in pretty much any store. Not very expensive. You want to have them around. They preserve really well. Uh, the uh, crazy ingredient of the recipe is cilantro. You certainly can use uh, dried cilantro, but uh, I would encourage you, for those of you who've not tried it, to try a little bit of fresh cilantro. It's really a taste that's, that's marvelous. You can get a bunch for a little over a dollar. I used half of it for something else, and this once you rinse it, you can just cut it and throw it on top of the recipe. It really only takes about 15 seconds. So, I think we're ready to start, so I am going to uh, find where my timer is. This is my accountability timer. I just have to remember the combination and the glare. There we go. So you know that I'm not pulling your leg when I say it takes 10 minutes. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to fire up the temp. Uh, olive oil works really well for that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our onions with the, we're going to saute them with some of the oil. I think some of you who've watched a few recipes know that I always recommend that if you have uh, vegetables you've thawed and they'll be waterlogged that you would drain them. These are pretty dry already, so I'm going to add them. While this is happening, I'm going to get my meat ready, which is the second thing that will go in. And then while I'm at it, I'm going to cut the vegetable bags so they're ready to go. And actually, when you want to drain the excess moisture, this is going to let you do. Although this recipe really can enjoy the extra moisture, so don't feel like you have to drain them. These are pretty dry. Okay. Ooh, my onions are going. So. Obviously, you, you want to make sure you've washed your hands before you do that. Okay. And, um, I'm going to get the can of beans opened. I've really been enjoying the quick recipes recently. We life has been busy and uh, we just got eight inches of snow and beautiful sunshine and I want to go snowshoeing, but because I'm old and snow, there's, uh, old and slow, there's only time to either cook or snowshoe, but I think I'll be able to do both today because I only need 10 minutes to make myself dinner. So. At this point, I'm going to add a little bit of broth, just add some moisture, and I'm going to add a little bit of salt. You want to be careful how much salt you add to this recipe, depending upon 
how much is in the beans. Some of them are going to be pretty salty, so you want to salt lightly until you have a chance to taste it. I'm going to add the chili. Oh yeah, you know, a couple tablespoons. Can't really handle that. And add the cumin. For those of you who like uh, Tex-Mex, you know, there are a lot of other things you can add to that. You can play around with it, you know, be more sophisticated, obviously. Um, garlic is one thing you can put in if you have it. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to add vegetables. I never have too much vegetables. This probably needs really like about 10 minutes stove top. So while you're, um, you mix this cooking here, you can, at the last minute, with really what the only thing you need to do is to take your tortillas out of the wrapper or however many you're going to need for the meal. And you just pop them in the microwave for maybe 30 seconds to a minute so they'll be warm when you put your, your stuff on it. Another option, if you like things that have a stronger tomato flavor, you can definitely add um, a little bit of tomato paste. Okay. I'm gonna add refried beans, any refried beans. These are black refried beans. Uh, pinto refried beans would also be just as good. Whatever you can find at your local store, whatever you can, that you're more likely to eat. And uh, you know, the, the warning with beans is um, not everyone can digest a lot of legumes really well. So obviously, if you're starting off in your family, maybe do a little bit less and see how everyone survives the night into the morning. I'm going to add a tiny bit more moisture to mine here. I like mine to not be too, too dry. Um, mm, sounds really good. Uh, cilantro. So like I said, you certainly could use your dry cilantro. I really like the fresh. I rinsed this under the uh, uh, the water when I did the, the other recipe the other day. And you just with a little kitchen scissors, you just cut, don't worry if there's stocks in it. Cilantro really gives a flavor that you can't reproduce in other place. Let me see. That's pretty much done. Okay. So at this point, I'm just going to put this in the microwave for maybe 30 seconds to warm them up. And, you know, in a few minutes, it's now like seven minutes and or so. You still have three minutes to just throw things, throw the, uh, uh, the empty packages in the uh, garbage, and give a wipe to the counter. Um, this is the base recipe. You can add any sort of garnish that you want, whatever you want. Try to keep it healthy, but not dousing it in cheese or whatnot. But you can add, if you have a really good quality salsa and you want to keep it a little more locale, just add more salsa, serve it with more salsa. Uh, if you have time to cut an avocado, avocado is great, especially if you have hungry teenagers. Um, if you can tolerate dairy, you can do a little bit of cheese, a little bit of sour cream. So, you know, this is a basic recipe. And it's just a template for you to be able to, to play and add to it whatever you want. So, voila. So all that's left to do is for everyone to grab themselves 
uh, a plate, put a couple of tortillas, dish themselves generously on what they want, and bon appetit. Enjoy your uh, healthy tacos.